Good morning. G'day, it's Fish the Beach Bum Investor with your cryptocurrency discussion and report for the, damn it, <laughs> the 22nd of January 2018. Some interesting news coming out in the last couple of days. Well, not news, rumors. I want to clarify that about Icon and Visa and a possible partnership going on there. I'll take you straight over to screen share and we'll get straight into that article before we get into the discussion today. Interesting article. This one's by Greg Janderson on Medium. And the title is Visa Secure Banking with Icon. Battles are brewing between the behemoths while, while up and comers are slowly working their way to the top of the pack. Blood is to be had, and only the best of the best will survive at the end. This is the world of cryptocurrency, and it's not for the faint of heart. One of these up-and-comers, Icon, is quickly working deals and making partnerships to secure their future. In less than two weeks, Icon will be holding their annual summit meeting, and there is a lot of underground talk about upcoming announcements. One of the most intrigued, intriguing rumblings brewing in a potential partnership with Visa Speculation is that Visa could be looking for a solid entry into crypto space while keeping the volatile nature of cryptocurrency in check. The way that this could potentially happen is that Visa card working more like a secured credit card instead of a credit-based card. ICX holders would be able to apply for a card and utilize their available balance in, up, in the upcoming wallet to use for purchases around the world. Keep in mind, Icon has been working on vending machines and ATMs in local college campuses for a while now. Being able to translate this into a partnership with Visa would give Icon the global reach they are aiming for and would quickly, and would quickly turn them into a dominant force. What makes Icon so appealing to Visa potentially? Icon was not set up to take over any particular space. With a team of over 300 engineers, Icon has been working diligently to interlink blockchain communication to give a plat platform for companies to communicate seamlessly. If the rumors are true, and this is their major announcement, we expect a number of other major companies to jump on board quickly after that. While Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other top 10 coins continue to show dominance, the battle could be soon over without there even being a fight and icon hodlers are going to be very, very happy. Uh, the article herein uh, are rumor and subject to scrutiny. We are always looking for more information and newsworthy tidbits. Please message us with any inside information you might have in the cryptocurrency world. Okay, so that's the article I'm referring to. Uh, as you know, well, most of you know, a lot of us in the crypto wave investment crew have been hodling Icon. So good news by the looks of that. Um, well, good rumor. <laughs> That's one I put in the description of the video today. This might be one that you don't want to sell the news on if it turns out to be true, because as the article suggests, if it is actually announced, it's going to be huge. Let's see if we've got in today. Christopher Stone's in first. Well done, Christopher. Lloyd, baby junkie. What's going on, Hake? Um, Hourglass, how are you, man? Icon and Visa, possibility by the looks of that article. Mr. Anderson, what's going on? Wilson Trainor. Pie fish bring the green back. Oh, yeah, it's been a bit of a nasty day, but um, I've just been keeping a bit, bit excited about that potential announcement in a couple of weeks for Icon. You know, I think there's going to be some good announcements. Well, there's obviously going to be some announcements made at the annual summit. If they're announcements of that magnitude, I like you. <laughs> David Wilkie said, come on, 54321, everyone phone my <laughs> um, In full disclosure, wait, Wilkie holds a massive bag of icon. So don't listen to him. Oh, is it all green as soon as I came on? Yeah, I told you that. Oh, you, you, you guys know I have that effect. I told you. And it has, might have something to do with Asia. We've been over this many times. <laughs> You're snapping up KuCoin, David Wilkie? I'd like to speak to that. The anecdotal evidence is people are pissed off with the exchange, to be honest. And I don't want to be mean to KuCoin. I, I expect them to go through teething issues as a newer exchange. 
and they have had the anecdotal evidence is there has been uh, a bit of slowness to to send and receive coins both into the exchange and off the exchange. Um, I've just been trading on there. I sent some coins to Ethercept. I hadn't checked my um, Discord over the weekend, so I've got to get back on there today to see whether he's received them yet. But um, you know, I expect him to have these te teething issues, but there certainly is a reason, Wilkie, for the price reduction in KuCoin. And people weren't overly, like this is just anecdotal evidence, I'm just reporting, not bagging KuCoin. I think it's a good exchange, I'm still trading there, but the anecdotal evidence is people weren't overly happy about uh, the swiftness with which the referral program was withdrawn. But in KuCoin's defense, they've said that they're doing that because this is really responsible. I've spoken about you know uncontrolled growth before, the growth being too rapid and that have been, having crushed businesses in the past. So I think KuCoin are actually being responsible in, in at least um, delaying or uh, temporarily withdrawing that referral program to make sure they can scale to fit the number of uh, members and, and users they currently have. Crypto Chronicus, uh, we had an announcement made. I'll just bring you back because you're a because you're a long time member. We're going to do a second check at this article for you. I'm not going to go right through it like I did, but I'll bring it over to screen share and show you which one I'm talking about. Oh, actually, no, I don't need to. Chronicus, I did something really clever. This is how good my tech skills are getting. Pre-prepared. If you're interested in the article that we were talking about with the uh, ICX partnership with Visa rumor, the the link to the article is in the in the description. So there you go, Chronicus. Go for it. Eric Meds is in. Oh, that's right, Chris Stone equals, I always forget that, Chronicus. I forget that that's your actual name. I don't know why you're watching with two accounts. Jack up my numbers. <laughs> 27 to 28, Stoke. Adam Tazin, Medi98, Guten Tag, German? Yes, it is, isn't it? I'm not confident anymore. So, <laughs> Will Korea, Grinkers, how you going, man? After David, Selamat Paggy. I'm lost. I'm guessing that. I don't know. Eric Meds said, watching with my fiance, Lisa. Well, congratulations to you both. Uh, she started investing recently. Yeah, cool, man. A few of the, um, a few of the ladies have, have definitely, it was a very male dominated space for a long time, but I think that's balancing out a little bit. We've got a few more ladies in our investment crew. Um, we've got Dee who comes on the show who's very enthusiastic about cryptocurrency. Uh, Wilkie's missus has started getting into cryptocurrency. So, yeah, this, this, uh, uh, Jason's, Jason's, Jason's missus has started getting into crypto. So, yeah, there's a, a growing number of, growing number of uh, females getting into it, which is good. Zhao, how are you going? Oh, Zhao, I've got a bone to pick with you, a big bone to pick with you. I've been posting up Discord links for ages and you created a bot that just posts it, up, posts it up automatically for when I go live. How long were you going to giggle watching me do that? And just go fish, I've already sorted it out. <laughs> Good to see you, Jeff. Simon, what's going on, man? Simon GTA's in. Primal Jane, thanks, Fish. Just picked up some more icon just in case. I've been watching you for a while. Like your lightheartedness. <laughs> Politics and the Discord group. Ah, it's good to good to hear. Welcome, Primal Jane. Yeah, I don't know that many people enjoy my politics, but if you're one of them, that's that's brilliant. <laughs> Daniel Chippendale has come in with a good morning from a, a language that I can't read, so well done. No, I don't recognise that at all. And I recognise languages even if I can't speak them because I've had my stint in numismatics, so I can quite often recognise the uh, characters, but I don't recognise them. Ah, it's Indonesian. Interesting. I've got a stack of Indonesian coins. How have I not noticed that? Crypto Chronicus is congratulating Eric and the future misses. Just read the article. It turns out. To, oh, yeah, man. I know Will Career. <laughs> Will Career said, I've just read the article. Descriptions. Uh, sorry, link is in the description if you've just tuned in and wondering what the uh, rumor 
about Icon and Visa is about. Uh, the source for that rumor is uh, one of the writers over at Medium, who I've credited and put the uh, link in, dis in, in the description as my <laughs> tech skills go. Oh, Zhao told me already. Oh, I'm an idiot then. Sorry, Zhao. <laughs> yeah, well, if it turns out to be true, it'll be big, man, for sure. They set up nicely for it. They went through a really stringent KYC process. A lot of people getting annoyed with how, you know, delays here and delays there. I was just like, that's fine. I have no concerns with that because I know they'll be running around behind the scenes going crazy. 300 engineers, quite impressive, right? Uh, Daniel Chippendale, the Japanese, the wonders of Google. Okay. Isaac said, well, I'm a numismatist. I always have, I can say numismatics, but numismatist always gets me. I'm a numismatist too. Been doing it for the last 20 years. Uh, low mintage applies here. Yeah, cool. Isaac, I've got, um, not shilling. Well, I am. Yes, we're opening, we're reopening. I used to sell on eBay. I've got five ton, five ton, five metric ton, 5,000 kilograms, about 1,100 pounds of coins. <laughs> so I have quite the uh, supply. But um, I'm reopening for the collectibles because a lot of it is current currency um, that I'll just be sending back to countries and repatriating, which is a pain in the ass process at times. But um, yeah, the good stuff that I pull out, you know, the collectibles, low mintage stuff, older stuff, I'll be selling on coin. What is it? What are we called? Coinbaycollect.com. Soon to be accepting crypto. Soon to actually have the store up and running. So get in there and check it out. <laughs> Ethercept, how you going? BP's in. Smash that like button, he said. G'day, mates. Ethercept taking on the Aussie, Aussie greeting. Did you see that news about, well, the rumor about Icon, Ethercept? That's what we sort of started the we'll focus with today. There's an article in the description, mate, if you want to have a look. Good, good, good looking stuff. We'll find out in two weeks. Catherine Fish, have you heard of a company called Intellix? Trying to figure out if they're on the blockchain, but no such luck yet. No, I haven't. Let me just do a quick Google search for you, Catherine. See if I can find out anything about it. Should probably have done this on screen. I've got, what I've got to figure out is that green screen thing where I can stay on screen and then you can see what I'm searching for. That would work well, I reckon. That's going to take a fair bit of effort for someone like me, but I'll figure it out. I've been watching the top YouTubers and figuring out what they do. So bells and whistles are everything. <laughs> Content counts for very little. Oh, no, I'm joking. Some really good YouTubers out there. I'm going to make a top five YouTubers video to follow because there are some really good ones out there. You can pretty much just check who I follow to, to find out. Um, intellects, Bitcoin, will it be global fail or end up like Chulis? Intellects system review. I tell you what, the first thing that comes up is scam. Intellect system exposed with proofs. It's got one star on. Broker trainings, trading with Paul, all the reviews are given at one star. Um, just based on the headlines coming up on that one, Catherine, that might be one to stay away from. I mean, like, you can go and look into it further. Maybe, you know, that that's all, um, you know, coordinated to, to, to drive the price down so people who are very keen on it can buy it up. Anyway, I, I, I tend to stay away from things. If you go and... Type in BitConnect and see what words are associated with that fairly regularly. So that just brings up red flags for me straight away. BP said, I still can't believe Tether still works. Is it too big to fail? That's a really interesting question, man. I have thought about using it, I'm not going to lie, because more recently it seemed um, smarter to take, because the market's swinging as one. Like it, it really is starting to move as one. You know how we had that, um, we had an inverse relationship between Bitcoin and the altcoins for a while. So when Bitcoin would go up, the altcoins would bleed into Bitcoin and then people would get bored with Bitcoin and go back into the alts and it, would, it got this um, inverse relationship. And now it's returned to a correlating relationship where the whole market's bleeding as one and coming back as one. So at times like that, it's it's really more profitable to be moving into... USD uh, rather than 
or into fiat or into a representation of fiat in Tether, provided you trust it, uh, than, than actually moving your profits into BTC, Ether, Litecoin. It doesn't matter when the whole market's bleeding. You're much better off moving it into US dollar Tether, um, provided that US dollar Tether is legitimate. It's an interesting, uh, interesting question, Bipo. Uh, whether it's too big to fail, I mean, a lot of people believe that, that they don't have the US dollars that are represented by the number of crypto in circulation, and the hope is that, you know, the same, the same thought as the banks not actually having liquid capital. Um, if everyone hit the withdrawal button at the same tried time and tried to get it in cash, the economy would implode, and that's the thought with US dollar tether, is that if everyone ever hits the withdrawal button at the same try time and cashes their crypto in for US dollar, that economy will implode and the last to hit the withdrawal button are going to be left head, head, holding a bag with no dollars represented in the real world. That's one of the theories, okay? I, I can't, I can't um, confirm or deny that theory. NZ Street Beats, Indian banks shutting, shutting down, I believe you mean, accounts affiliated with crypto exchanges causing dips today. Don't panic, family. Yeah, it's look, it seems to be having a domino effect, especially throughout Southeastern Asia, uh, or throughout Asia in general, sorry. Um, will that translate into long-term bans? Will that turn, translate into short-term restrictions, long-term regulation? Will that be followed in the Western world? Will it affect all crypto? or just those looking to act as currency? Will blockchain that improves business and industry still be allowed? There's a lot of what ifs still to come. So I'd, 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 I've mentioned my comments before that I don't think a permanent ban on blockchain technology is possible. I don't think it helps society. And I think that governments will figure out that more increased efficient, efficiency and production and all that sort of thing that that blockchain does enable actually increases their ability to generate revenue for the government through taxation so where it can act as a bit of a threat to their control on finance in traditional senses uh it does actually give them ability to generate more revenue through increased productivity so I don't think they'll ban it long term, man. That's that's my opinion. Banks are trying to shut down the competition, Seb. I don't I don't disagree, but I, again, I just don't think that long term. I think that long term, the block the power of blockchain technology is what's going to win. I've often stated that uh, currencies are probably at the biggest biggest threat because governments don't like that. But you know the. There's not supposed to be a finance and state is not supposed to be so heavily entangled like personal finance and state fish what are the tax rates in australia regarding crypto medi 98 it is it is based on capital gains um capital gains tax now i've yet to look in to whether we are taxed on individual trades like they are in the us uh we'll need to obviously really consider that come june 30 tax time for us um or well, leading up to that for me, it's still a little bit early. Um, the amount that I've actually withdrawn from the overall crypto economy is very easy for me to trace because um, I've used I've used Living Room with Satoshi to do it, and that has a like I've had everything emailed to me, so I've got transaction records of everything that's been removed and the actual uh, Australian dollar value, which is what I'll be taxed on. Um, so I've got everything prepared for <laughs> an accountant that I'm going to have to find uh, who can advise me on the best way to. Um, to pay my what, what's due, my, my fair share. So that's fine. I, I don't necessarily agree with what the Australian government spends taxes on, but I am aware that taxation is, you know, is, is a necessary part of, of the society we live in. I, I hate what they spend half of it on, probably more than half, but, you know, it doesn't mean I just can't pay my share because there is a, you know, a lot of good things that, that taxation, the money from taxation is used for as well. BP said, I'm worried about whether I want to live on the beach or in the mountains. Well, uh, the beach, uh, BP said, just pray to that. I'm not worried about dips. 
Um, yeah, well, the beach is um, probably a little more dangerous in that it'll be underwater soon. <laughs> the current rates, the uh, sea levels are rising due to global warming. So where the mountain will be the beach soon, man. <laughs> so I'm going to stay on the beach as long as I can, then I'll move to the mountains, which will be the beach. <laughs> the only way banks can take over crypto is if they collapse our economies and pose as the saviour and have EUS, uh, or oh, euros, you adopt their digital asset instead of uh, going into market that already exists. EUS, I'm not sure what EUS is an acronym for there. Otherwise, they screw the market is already there and they don't own most of it. Yeah, cool. Pablo, Icon. Hello, Icon World, 19th of December, 2017. More scam alert. Do not click on any website, medium, Twitter, link about ICX airdrop. Icon team never asks for personal information for bonus distribution. Okay, 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 okay. Thanks, Pablo. Airdrop and all ICX bonuses will be distributed directly to ICX wallets after mainnet launch. Perfect, Pablo. Perfect. Okay, so someone's obviously running a phishing scheme. I hate how it's called that, obviously. Gives me a bad name. But someone's obviously running a phishing scam saying, okay, just you know, send us your deets and we're going to drop you your extra icon because we are getting a 2% airdrop, but that's going to happen at the launch of mainnet. Stoked about that 2% airdrop, by the way. Yes. That's actually a lot of money <laughs> for, for people who got in um, at the pre-sale. So really looking forward to that, um, obviously. <laughs> and um, But, yeah, just be aware. Thanks, Pablo, for the news that someone's doing a phishing scam. Yeah, exactly, Pablo. Wait for their wallets. Exactly. Wait for the Icon mainnet and the main, the main – like, it'll be released to Icon wallets, I'm sure of that. I don't think it'll be released to Ethereum wallets. I don't think. I could be wrong. But definitely don't go sending your deets to anyone. Point is that – the um, tokens will be dropped on you. You don't need to go and send anyone your deets. <laughs> you type in multiple sentences, it's a bad habit. It's not too bad, BP. It's just when other people chat in between you, I lose lose uh, the flow. Video by Crypto Trends. Look it up on YouTube. Thanks for the tip, Will Korea. Seems like I can't post the link here. Yeah, no, I've got to fix that up. No, I think we took that out because we were getting smashed with... Um, People coming in and going, do you need a date, Fish? Because we have girls waiting for you. We were getting smashed with those. So I don't know why. It must be something to do with my Google search history. <laughs> um, but we were getting smashed by those sorts of ads. So we left the ability to put links in out. Uh, Stephen Milner, ICX airdrop for um, pre-sale investors. It was happening. It's It was announced ages ago. So people who didn't. Uh, no, two percent airdrop was for um, because they sold out at pre-sale. They didn't end up in, even going to ICO, um, or that was the first phase of ICO. I can't remember. It sold out in six hours. But the point is that they had bonuses put aside to attract people in further stages of the ICO if required. And because they didn't need those bonuses anymore, they just said, "Oh well, here you go. We'll distribute them to the people who actually bought the shares." So that was a really cool bonus. I still don't know what the plan was because the overall market cap for Icon, the overall circulating supply is still showing 400 million, right? And that's the thing. I, I don't really understand that because uh, there would have been people who didn't qualify through the KYC process, which was quite stringent with Icon. So just having a look, I'm just going on to coin market cap to check that circulating supply now. $9.18 currently for Icon, by the way, if you're, if you're interested. Uh, yeah, see, so it's got the circulating supplies, 380 million. Uh, and, and a total supply of 400 million. But the total supply should have been reduced because of a burning of tokens, I would have thought. Because there were people who didn't qualify through the KYC process, and my understanding was those tokens were going to be burned, not distributed. So either we should be being airdropped more tokens for the failed KYCs, or there should have been tokens burned. If anyone has any info to, um, to you know, to say why that didn't happen, just chuck it in the chat for us now.
Nah, Seb, it's just for pre-sale investors, man, or ICO investors for that icon thing as far as I'm aware. Oh, what, you're a global warming skeptic, Floyd? Might have lived on the Gold Coast for 30 years. I've watched the tide ride. The tides go up. So, yes, we are having an effect. It's scientifically proven. I'm not going to get into that debate. Let's stick to crypto. I have a lot of controversial opinions on a lot of controversial issues. It's 51.50 time because Chiakai Hinahara has dropped in for the chat. How are you, man? 2% Ethercept's pretty happy about. BP said, if they drop the bond market and we are scared, then we will beg them to manage our retirement system and nationalize it. They can use the same crisis to bring in a digital asset that will fix it. <laughs> but it will just be another scam, I'm sure. The bankers are scam artists. Yes, they're very good at it. LRC doing similar things right now. Airdrop of LRCQ and LRCN. Okay, cool, thank you. What's LRC? Can't remember. LRC. Oh, loop ring. Yeah, cool. I still got to look into that. <laughs> Gee, I said no shilling in the chat. That's all we do in the chat, mate. I miss every airdrop because my money is on Ledger on or on exchange. Well, that's no good, BP. Yeah, you can claim. I thought you could claim airdrops from Ledger as well. And Floyd said loop ring good. Fish, only 99.7% of scientists agree global warming is real. Please don't act like it's definite <laughs> with your liberal math. Yes, true. 99.7% is a bit, it, it is, isn't it? It's taking, <laughs> taking it a bit, a bit far. Yes, you did stoke the fire. Because you know the funny thing is, the percept is my father has a degree. Uh, in I can't remember which branch of branch of science, but the point is, is he was also consulted about writing the environmental laws for the maritime industry in the U.S. He's been in the marine industry in Australia for thirty years at the forefront of it, and he is somewhat a skeptic in, of global warming. And I sit there and I just scratch my head. <laughs> so. <laughs> Please don't stoke that fire too hard. Uh, Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis published a paper, uh, paper title, a, sh a short intro into the world of cryptocurrencies with an overall positive assessment of digital currency and blockchain. That's awesome. I don't know how, like there's not too many people who can really speak intelligently against the value of cryptocurrency. The people who are considered experts in the area or whose opinions are considered to hold weight because of their previous ex success in finance or investing, i.e. Warren Buffett, have absolutely no comprehension of the technology underlying Bitcoin. None. He may be, I don't care about his investment skills because this that's not necessarily what we're doing here. It's tech. And I know that sounds funny for a non-tech guy to be screaming that down the camera, but it's true. And the thing that excites me about this tech is it has the ability uh, to somewhat liberate people, and that's good for me. Um, I could try for the ICX one. My problem, BB Junkie, is I never know when airdrops are coming because I don't keep up with news. I don't think you can get the airdrop unless you're in on the pre-sale. I need a ticker that automatically sends me news related to each of my investments. BP, Jouse created that, man. Jouse created that in our Discord group. He created bots to actually go and pull off the um, news items. I think it's generally related to Twitter and it brings them into our Discord group for for some of the currencies that we are keeping an eye on. Very clever. So maybe consult with Jow. <laughs> Ethland did a snapshot on January 10 for an airdrop. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of forks and airdrops and this sort of thing going on throughout the economy. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha covered. It, it's the title, so we're happy to go through that again. Uh, Sin CD 86. Uh, Sin CD 86, there is actually a description 
ah, a link in the description. Let me just bring you over to screen share. Don't mind showing it again since it is the title of the video for today's chat. Uh, if you are interested, mate, we do talk all different cryptos every day of the week. So you're welcome to subscribe and drop in again for the conversation. But let me show you this article that has been released on Medium. Now, it is a rumor. Um, but this is, this is what's uh, generated the discussion today. So uh, Visa Secure Banking with Icon. And it basically goes through to describe, we did go through it in detail at the start of the video. And again, the uh, link for this article is in the description. Um, but it basically goes through to say that the annual summit for Icon is in a couple of weeks and they've got some big announcements due. And one of the big rumors going around the Icon community and around the crypto, crypto economy is that uh, there's potentially going to be an Icon and Visa partnership. And this article suggests that if that rumor comes to fruition, that it could be uh, forget, you know, forget uh, all these other um, platforms that have been dubbed the Bitcoin and Ethereum killers because the race could be over. Now, I don't know whether I necessarily agree with the strength of that uh, opinion, but obviously uh, solidifying uh, a partnership between uh, Icon and Visa would be just massive for the Icon project. So, I am going to get off screen share and come back for the chat. We can continue talking about that or we can go on to something else. Yeah, have a read, man. It's worth a look for sure. Like I said, just rumors at the moment, Sin CD, just rumors, man. Jay said, BP, get me some devs and some investment money and I'll create a center of information. <laughs> There's, a, there's plenty of ideas in this economy that Jiao points out a very good point. It's difficult to, like, there's a lot of ideas going on in the space, right? And I think one of the things that has affected cryptos in the past is keep keeping members focused on the task at hand because it, it can be much of a freelance environment where the, the team is working on the project for a bounty or a fee and then the next thing comes along and they move to that. So, you know, keeping... Keeping the team focused on a on a single objective can be really really difficult in this economy, and and cre even creating that team as you've got people who are knowledgeable in the space and people move from one project to another. It is it can be difficult. So that's going to be part of the winning formula is actually um, creating that creating that environment that uh, where people have a a common objective and are working together towards that. Johnny, if I make big money, you believe I'll be investing in some project. Maybe I'll come to you when that time comes. Yeah, that's it, VP. One dislike, I don't know <laughs> who you are. I don't know what you want. If you're looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have any money. But what do I, what I do have a very particular set of skills, skills I've acquired over a very long career, skills that, <laughs> might make, that make me a nightmare for people like you. Jow, don't threaten people who dislike. <laughs> Everyone's allowed their opinion. <laughs> Wilson Trainer Fish, have you heard much about Boss Coin? Yeah, I had a look at it. I can't remember it though. Do you want to go on screen share? Let's go on screen share. I'll remember it once we start looking at it. I have had a look at it. I'm sure I have. Let's have a look. Okay, for today's cryptocurrency, Boss Shares, Boss Coin. Sorry. Okay. Unknown market cap at this stage with a 500 million boss total supply. Chart looks nice. A little bit of a parabolic spike here, but it's come back from that. Sitting currently at $4 a coin. Uh, let's have a look. I'm sure we had, we might have even had a look at this on the show before because I do remember it. Self evolving cryptocurrency platform. The modified Federation Byzantine Agreement algorithm will allow uh, for low latency transactions while being more energy efficient. Bosscoin aims to overcome the technical and operational issues inherent in many cryptocurrencies. Cool. Latest news. Okay, good. Recent update. Nice to see. So it's obviously being actively. 
communities being actively built and developed, which is more than you can say for some coins in the economy. <laughs> so that's a good start. Having a look. Uh, okay. Bosscoin is a self evolving cryptocurrency platform for trust contracts. Trust contracts will provide a decidable and approachable framework for creating and executing contracts on the blockchain. The Congress network is aimed towards creating a more democratic and productive decision making process. And the incentive scheme and issuance plan is aimed towards creating value for the coin while deterring the centralization of power. That's good. The modified fe uh, federated Byzantine agreement algorithm will allow for low latency transactions while being more energy efficient. Bosscoin aims to overcome the technical operational issues inherent. In the okay. Let's have a look. Trust contracts. Trust contracts are securely executable contracts based on a decidable programming framework called Alchain. <laughs> That's cool. Which consists of the web ontology language and the time timed or Tomata language. Sorry, I'm not familiar with those languages, um, but we can have a look at that and read more. Go away. That'll link you to a Medium article, which we won't go through in the entirety on this show, but this is something you will need to read if you're looking to invest in this project. Be thorough. Understand what the value proposition is. It's not something I'm going to go through because we don't go through super in depth. It's more of a starting point on this show. So let's get back to the uh, boss coin homepage. See what else we've got here. The Congress network is decision making body in the boss coin network, which improves governance issues arising in decentralized organizations and helps the system continuously evolve into a more robust ecosystem. I'm sure that'll link you to another medium article or similar. Okay, just looking, having, having a look at a, a visual representation of the structure, if you like, trust contracts. Commons budget, incentive systems, decentralized applications, Congress. So, yeah, cool. Seems to be a, uh, you know, a, a coin that you can build on top of. Decentralized applications, trust contracts, embedded services for trustless business environments. So, it's cool. Five billion coins over the next 128 years. <laughs> cool. Thinking quite long term. Initial development budget is a 10% share. Commons budget, 36%. 18% for uh, freezing rewards. I'd have to have a look more into what that means. Uh, confirmation rewards at 1.8 billion boss. Cool. Sweet. Technical roadmap. M1 Alpha, consensus P2P protocol specification and implementation, MFBA consensus, FBA key design implementation, data store, store specs, and SQ light store implementation. I, <laughs> um, I have no idea what any of those words mean. Trust contracts, ontologies, and rule. Um, TAL, T-A-L, remittance, send, and receive tokens based on trust contracts. Important to find basic boss coin ontologies, in interference engine, formal specification, and key design elements. Okay, M2 token net, P2P unit and acceptance test. M2, oh, milestone two. So it's not actually, it's not actually giving targets like dates for these. It's just saying these are this is sort of the 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 order in which we will look to do things which is interesting. You have to keep an eye and see how quickly these are getting ticked off to understand what timeline this overall uh, roadmap is likely to occur. And three, Genesis. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I would have to have a, um, I would have to speak to some, like some, People who are much better with the technical side of cryptocurrency than I am to understand how long each of these milestones are likely to take to actually tick off. And that's something you should be aware of in investing in a project. Now, this one doesn't set uh, targeted dates like a lot of projects do, 
which means you're going to need to do some more research to understand what you're investing in. Now, if you're if you're good with technology and, and programming and a lot of the things that these are these uh, technical roadmap targets are talking about, then you may well be able to decide, okay, with this size team, with this sort of experience, it's going to take them this long, this long, this long, so I can see this roadmap, you know, occurring over two, three years or whatever it might be. But I don't have the ability to to assess that for myself, so I would have to consult with technical experts in the field to get an idea. CEO is Inwan Kim, uh, using Choi's Cho CTO, creator of the trust contract. CFO is Jin Chan Kim. Okay, so one of 27, so they've obviously got a fairly big team. Developers, cool. Lots of developers, lots of devs, big development team. Community manager is Scott Athena, business communications manager, Douglas D. Kim, business development. And so yeah, they've got a, look, it looks like a pretty bulky team. If these are all actually core team members, they've got a pretty bulky team. It's good to see. Okay, you got your white papers, English, Korean, and Cantonese, or oh, Chinese, sorry. Oh, it's probably actually in Mandarin, is it? I'm not sure which one the primary dialect is. Um, in any case, it'll be there. You've got a wallpaper. Awesome. I, I, I mean, it's good. It's, it's branding. It helps community building. People download this. They feel like they're part of it. So there you go. I think that's pretty cool. They've got a uh, Slack channel, which is good to see. Um, you know, on a few of the social medias. So you can probably get in contact with the team over at Slack there. They've also got an email. So that's good. Interesting. Boss Platform Foundation in uh, Switzerland. Cool. Yeah, so you'd have to go and read the white paper in those Medium articles that um, were linked to the website to understand whether you want to go to invest in that. But it looks, I mean, that team looked pretty impressive off the bat. You'd have to go and have a have a look and see how valid it is, but just on the face of it, it looks, looks fairly impressive for the quick look that we've had. Just coming back to the chat. Dennis Turkson. Uh, just on a strain, mate. People's Bank of China has reportedly issued a document today requiring payment providers in Beijing to stop facilitating cryptocurrency trading activities. Thoughts, FUD? Mm. Let me digest that for a second because we had a similar thing happen in Australia, BB Junkie. I understand that Australia is not as big as investment capital as Asia and China into this economy, but we're not we're not minor players, especially per capita. And our major four banks put the squeeze on in a similar way. Uh, freezing accounts that had had cryptocurrency transactions. So that's not good. That's not a good thing. I can't say it's fud because if that's uh, well, look. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt depends on whether it is actually just a rumor or whether it is actually valid news. If it's valid news, it's not good news. Um, now, whether that's a temporary suspension or whether that's a permanent shutdown, it, it, again, remains to be seen, BB Junkie. I've often said I don't have a problem with regulation coming into the space in some degree to protect consumers. I think that's still necessary to some degree. I still think that people need to do their own due diligence and somewhat people need to be held responsible for their own actions, not babysat by government. So, yeah. Ethercept, are those programs are specifically to brainwash people. It's part of a larger political operation. I have no idea about the conversation I've missed. That sounds interesting. What's going on there? Oh, I can't find it. One day, 10 Doge will be worth 100K, <laughs> BP. 
Ah, oh, Chase F is in. Sorry, guys, I missed a bunch of chat. Yeah, Wan Chang's Wan Chang looks alright. Seb said ICX is my largest position by far. I'm still planning to keep a big position in ICX, but I have to sell some if I want to buy a significant position in another coin. That's right. It happened to a lot of us at the Crypto Wave Investment Group. It became our biggest hold simply because of the uh, the time frame with which it went. 100x essentially. <laughs> All right, I'm coming back to live because I've missed a bunch already. So I'm sorry for anyone. Someone said Tron Puppy, super hard dot hook. Now I haven't looked at Tron Puppies, man. I'm really consumed in crypto kitties and and fish at the moment. That's a joke. Uh, Super Hot Dog Org is a Tron fan. I'm swinging either way, man. I think that, like a lot of companies and a lot of, see the way I look at it is they're kind of chalk and cheese in terms of Tron and Icon, right? You've got one company that went super, super hit marketing heavy, went out there and essentially just drummed up so much support for what they could do, and then you. Um, you know, in the in the actual market, in the actual crypto market. So there was a lot of hype about that. And I'm not saying it was unjustified, not necessarily. I'm just saying for, for the real world progression of that actual crypto, when, when compared to Icon, you've either got to say that Tron has been overvalued or Icon has been undervalued. That's the only way I can see it because one of them, was very heavy on marketing, came out with what is an ambitious goal and could be brilliant, but it's still a goal, an ambition, an idea, a work in progress that is a long way away from realising the potential they expect it to. Whereas I kind of not been big on marketing. They just haven't been. How many of you actually heard about the ICO? I'm sure not many of you, even if you were in this space three months ago. It was an, I didn't find it. Joe bought it to me. So, yeah, I don't think they went heavy on the marketing strategy. They were too busy making real-world partnerships, real-world deals, working on what is reportedly very impressive technology as well, even though the founder said that that's really not that important. How's that? Founder goes, oh, tech's not, tech's not really the big thing here. <laughs> that's what he's trying to explain. So, and, and yet the reports are that the tech is actually quite impressive. So... I think that, you know, comparative valuations, I'm not sure where they're sitting at the moment, but I think Icon deserves a much bigger valuation than Tron. Much bigger. Um, and there was a report that's been written comparing different projects that have actually, uh, you know, gone heavy with marketing and actually been pretty light in the actual product that they're presenting to market. And then they've presented coins that have gone the opposite route in really working on what the, the value that they're bringing to market as opposed to telling everyone what they can possibly do. So, yeah, for mine, Icon is is a better hold than Tron on, based on that. But having said that, Tron have got some really, really lofty ambitions. And if they're able to go even close to achieving those ambitions, the Tron platform will gain value from its current price. I have no doubt about that. Whether they'll achieve it or not is not something I can comment on because it's it's too early for mine. Uh, after the team on Boss Coin get their allocation of coin, what's left for the public flight fish? Uh, I don't know. I didn't check. Sorry, man. <laughs> Super Art Doc, I just bought 100k Tron. Alpha David, which guy am I telling to come on the stream? I have no idea what you're talking about. We need some sort of legislation to protect crypto investors current, oh, sorry, investors, sorry, comma. <laughs> Currently all my bank accounts refuse to clear debit card payments to Coinbase. I could use SEPA, but that's extra fees from bank. Ah. It's a bit annoying, BB. You're over in, obviously, in um, UK, aren't you? Talking about SEPA. 
five accounts, three banks. Ah. Hey, dry good, spell Eva. Welcome. <laughs> BP said, I hate Wells Fargo and I'll be using Ethos as my bank in the future. Yeah, a lot of people are starting to get really bullish on Ethos. I like the community they're building. And I, look, that's the thing. I, I've spoken before about how I didn't appreciate the intensity of the shilling from Ethos supporters, but the Ethos community are obviously building passionate supporters, which is a good thing. And they can't control if people go, go a little bit over the top. So I certainly don't hold that against um, the Ethos community, the, the product or the team. Uh, Icon should have a bigger market cap than ADA. I agree, Dennis Turk. Dennis Turk. It's a working, well, very, I mean, mainnet launches in two days, I think. Two, I always get this confused. Two or six days. <laughs> 24th or 28th. I think it's the 24th. Um, and then general meeting, the annual summit in two weeks where some big announcements are expected. Uh, Superheart.org said, mark my words, laugh out loud at TRX, Jack Ma. Yeah. Now, Jack Ma's an excellent salesman. I completely agree. Um, and that's why it can go well. But I still don't understand valuing pro projects that don't have a working product at, at multi-billions of dollars, or at least aren't, aren't really like, close to a working product. Seb likes Ethos as well. It will be huge. Oh, hang on. BB Junkie said, what are we talking about there? Someone's intending to upgrade to Hello World. It will be huge. Hello World is life changing. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, Crypto Chronicles said Qtum um, times 86 virtual machine. I'm not sure what you're referring to, mate. Day's having more of a read into QTUM at the moment, Qtum. She's, she might be able to comment on that next time she comes into the show, mate. Ethercept said, ADA, everyone who's read Cardano's white paper, raise your hand. Well, I've read all the, the um, what do you call them? The, the, the bunch of articles and uh, research papers that comprise the, comprise the white paper, if you can call it that. But yeah, it's super impressive. I haven't read all of it even, Ethercept, but it is impressive. Um, but you know me, mate, applied, applied versus theoretical. Just a question to do with our favourites. Can you ask D to find out why EOS is down only 25% and ADA 49% from all-time highs? Does this mean EOS is stronger? Not EO. D is actually doing research on EOS versus ADA at the moment. So, yes, she will be able to bring you her findings next time she's on the show. That's a, that's a subject she's focusing on. Superheart.org, you're the ultimate shiller. How's LTC going? Is it hitting $500 by January like you told everyone it would? <laughs> Sorry, man. If you're going to do that, I've got to call you out. Uh, Superheart.org said, imagine getting an Apple before they created the iPhone. Hmm. Yes, you would have done very, very well. They had immense growth after that. Uh, Dry God Spellweaver. Is it true Next will be purchasable at one kidney per one Next? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how they're pricing it, man. I haven't actually seen the valuation they came up with, but I know it was incredibly difficult to be accepted as a strategic investor. I thought I put forward quite a strong case and I was rejected. So in bitterness, I will say, yes, it probably will. <laughs> now, it still looks to be a good project. I just, I haven't, has anyone seen the valuation on it yet? I think Ethos will be likened to being the next Microsoft in size and impact. Cool, BP. Pablo said, programmer humor. All right, that's what you guys are talking about. Guys, should I be worried? I just withdrew my New Zealand dollar tether to my bank and five seconds later it lost connection and still hasn't recovered. But my phone is fine. Illuminati are trying to screw me. <laughs> NZ Street Beats, definitely. Oh man, you, you guys, your tech's about as good as ours in Australia. Your internet's probably still at bloody seven, 1978 standard. Hang on, the internet wasn't created then, was it? That's my point. Still using bloody bits of string with cups on the end. Hello world is the first thing you learn in every programming language, the most basic thing. Thanks, Jeff. Well, that's why it doesn't make sense to me. Maybe ethos will be the only way to crash out of crypto. 
oh, sorry, to cash out of crypto. Uh, could be. I mean, there are other services that currently currently offering it though. Drug and spell weaver, quite a few. So I don't know why Eth Ethos would be would be the only viable option for cashing out going forward. But I'm more in, I'm more interested in spending anyway than cashing into fiat. If it's just cashing into fiat, it's just speculation. That's all we're doing. It's not actually. We're not really. We're not getting blockchain to an everyday currency. We're not getting. We're not achieving that by just having it a speculative market where we cash out into fiat. I want to see it spent. I want to spend it. That's what I want to do. And that's what you know. That's why I was so excited about that Icon Visa announcement that I went through in the article just before. Because to me, that's exciting. I got a big old bag of Icon that I can go and put on a Visa card and spend anywhere in the world on anything I want. Awesome. So I'm hoping that turns out to be true. Catherine said, I'll be happy if LTC stays over 200. I think it will long term, Catherine. It's been a big shake out of confidence, but the LTC Foundation have proven themselves to be, uh, and, and Charlie Lee, have proven themselves to be effective in, in getting what I was just talking about, currencies, the, the currency LTC, spendable in real world situations. Now, surely just the listing on Steam alone is worth a fortune, but LTC is getting more acceptable. The transfer fees are much, much lower than Bitcoin at this stage. They're looking at doing a fork of Litecoin to upgrade technology and transaction costs will be increased to one seventh of a cent. That's all off the top of my head. So please don't quote me on those figures. But the point is the developments are coming to increase, sorry, to decrease transaction fees on the LTC network. Uh, so that should further enable its use in microtransactions, which is which is cool. So I think LTC is still a big player in, in the game. One of only four coins accepted on Coinbase at the moment. Available, I should say, not accepted. Fish, eventually we'll all be just surfing and one big smile and worth one BTC and everyone will have... Free and happy and no poverty nor hunger. Please pray for my super heart org mission. Google us. Guys, check it out. Super. That sounds cool. I mean, I think it's about, for me, it's about, <laughs> for me, it's about moving to a cashless society. <laughs> there you go. Crazy, right? Um, I've been watching a lot of and researching a lot about um, uh, the age of, you know, the age of surplus in terms of the age of people won't be wanting for anything when we've got bots ca capable of replicating virtually anything in the world and the only cost of the production of anything is resources, energy, and like raw, re raw material, energy, and data, then the cost of recreating set virtually anything, Lambos, if that's what your desire is, <laughs> a Tesla for me. Um, it, it comes down to, to a near zero cost. So the age of abundance is the term I'm looking for. So at that point, what purpose does money in its traditional form serve? Perhaps none. And that's the society I would like to see. I know that seems crazy and I know that might not happen for hundreds of years, but I'd like this to be the first step towards that. <laughs> Ethersep said, why EOS is down less than ADA? It means that crypto investors don't even know what Haskell is and certainly not Cardano's next move on after 3.0 people, 3.0 blockchain. Thank you, Ethersep. Seb, imagine getting it into Betamax, oh, into Betamax the day before they created the best quality video tapes. That's a good point, Seb. Yeah, there's there's been a lot of... Um, Technologies touted as game changers that have fallen into obscurity. So very, very good point by Seb. Crypto Chronicus, your stream must be lagged. We covered that a few minutes ago. Uh, you guys, I'm it's me lagging. I'm I'm not caught up on the chat. There's a lot of it, and I'm trying to get everyone's comments in. Sorry about that. Fish, you're so right about that. In some ways, the easier it is to cash out, the more volatile it will be. Yeah, that's right, BP. 
We want people to spend their crypto. That's it, man. That's what we want. Expecting my 10X card in the next week or so. Can't wait. Awesome, baby junkie. I'll be interested to see how that goes for you. The, the 10X price has taken an almighty hit in recent times. Is a hedge fund, uh, superheart.org said, oh, superheart.org is uh, the, the website I mentioned before, is a hedge fund and we make very risky trades by high frequency and I will always show what we are pumping, Tron LTC and BTC. Oh, I think you're pretty, like that's, I mean, LTC and BTC are, are really, I think, just good long-term holds, superheart.org. I think they'll pump themselves. Um, and also the marketing team behind Tron is impressive in that they were able to build community support really rapidly behind the project. And with that sort of support and that sort of funding, it brings them a lot closer to actually achieving the lofty targets they set out for. I think the other thing, superheart.org, is that when you've bought on the back of fear, uncertainty and doubt, which there certainly was, because people were uncertain, people were fearing, people didn't know about this plagiarism that was uh, that was rumoured in the white paper. And I still think people are a little bit uncertain of that because my understanding is the white, pa white paper's been taken down. That's not a sign that's going to fill people with confidence, but quite often when people are fearing, that's the best time to buy. And for me, they, they are all red flags that would have me staying away from a Tron buy at the moment. But perhaps the savvy investor says, well, fish, well, you're being fearful, I'll be greedy because it is often a good tactic. But yeah, for me, I'm a little fearful of those, those certain points. The other two, Bitcoin, Litecoin. I think Bitcoin, I think Bitcoin's one of the more undervalued at the moment. It doesn't often get to a point when I, when I say that. But when I was at 20,000, I was just like, oh, coins for sure, because this is getting well overheated. And then, it, you know, it's, it's, it's almost gotten to a point where it's overcorrected for mine. The BTC, I think they've safely seen off the challenge from Bitcoin Cash, unless anyone disagrees with that. I think there's a growing dissatisfaction with Bitcoin Cash amongst um, crypto investors. So I think they've successfully held off that challenge. Uh, Superheart.org said Saudi Arabia will be the first country to adopt a cashless society. Yeah, that could be true. I just hope to see it happen. Some nice swings on Ven hit BTC, currently 7%. Cool, BB junkie. Yeah, VeChain's had good times. It's up there in the top 25 cryptos. Two billion market cap last time I checked. Had really good times. And so has Walton. Walton Coin's been really good for me. I bought it at $10 at the start of the year or at the end of last year. And it's like, well, nine to ten dollars. I've stacked up my big bag. I first bought it, I think, seven, but then I, yeah, I really got bullish on it, and stacked in. So I think that was up at like twenty-five bucks, somewhere around that mark last time I checked. Happy with that. RFID technology projects doing well. And that's why I picked up some Wabi as well. BTC will ah, excuse me, not yet. BTC will stay approximately five to four. Excuse me. 5.4 times LTC this year, i.e. when BTC hits $45,000 in September, LTC will be $1,500. Hoddle, hoddle, hoddle. Superheart.org is going to love hearing that. <laughs> Sophie, uh, hashtag Sophia, Saudi will also be the first country to adopt uh, no human policy and a cashless society. <laughs> Superheart.org, very clever. Okay. Oh, really, Chronicus? That's sick. Chronicus is doing a trip at the moment to Cancun, and I suggested to keep an eye out because PIVX is accepted in a few places in Cancun. And I, I'm not suggesting that Chronicus is only using PIVX. I'm just saying, he said, I still haven't had to use Fiat on my trip yet. And this guy, Chronicus is a, you want to see a crypto diehard, see a guy who gets a PIVX, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin tattooed on his arm. That arm, that arm. I can't remember. It looks sick, though. We'll put together a clip of all this stuff and show you what about Crypto Chronicus's trip and all that sort of stuff. I got to still bloody send that email too, Chronicus, to the um, tattooist, the artist. Uh, Cur Sam said, "Curious to know if ICX may, may uh, excuse me, ICX mainnet launch or Summit Developer Party Conference, uh, sorry, Partner Conference will be their bigger news. Both in one mass uh, week is massive." Sam, I think it. I think it is, man. I think it is massive. We already saw the, the coin start to run up a couple of days ago quite heavily. I'd say it'd be on the back of that Medium article that I did and the rumour 
with the partnership with Visa um, starting to circulate. But yes, two major, major events coming up in Icon's near future, mainnet launch and annual summit. So yeah, um, I think it's good times ahead. Sam, I, I, don't, I think it might be, I, we've got a few Sams in our investment crew, man, but if we haven't spoken before, or you haven't seen my videos, I've actually done an Icon formula. And I used it, I did a formula just using Korean figures. So I, I kept the international market out of it, which is conservative in my opinion. And I didn't factor in any growth in the overall crypto economy, which I, again, I feel like that's conservative. And that took it to a price point of $30.73. So I still think we've got some good growth from where we are now. And I can see those figures being achieved. And there is actual math behind it, which is good. <laughs> Uh, your channel just got pumped, Tron. Wow, look at it go, go fish. <laughs> Token, uh, Tokes is going to be huge too, Fisho. It's uh, held up and in the green 11%. Is that not EO? Is that E? I know it is, but are you making the pun there? Tokes is in the green. It's kind of an obvious one. <laughs> uh, Kronika said, Oh, yeah, I forgot. I bumped into a dude here. I was pitching crypto too, and he whipped out a wallet, already had one ha, in the jungle. I sent him BTC. That's so cool, man. I'll send you some PIV. Get him. Oh, hey, Chronicus, I'll send you some PIV. And if you if you get anyone who wants to download the PIV wallet, just spread it around, man. I'll send you some PIV to do that. You can, you can just give like anyone who wants to download a wallet, like one PIV or half a PIV or whatever. Like, you know, 10, 10 bucks US or whatever it's sitting at at the moment, eight bucks. I don't know. It's a generous gift. I'll send you. I'll send you ten to give away on your trip. There you go. I'll do that. Oh, I'll do that. Wait, Chronicus, if you're going to be around tomorrow, I'll download another Pivx wallet today, and I'll chuck some funds in there, and we could do it on the show. Oh, you're traveling. That's probably going to be hard. Hmm. I'll just send you some now, and we'll do a live show for the other stuff <laughs> when you're back. The prediction of forty-five thousand for BTC is by Cliff High. Anyone who hasn't heard of him. Do yourselves a favor and have a listen to a couple of his YouTubes. Very smart rooster. Nadio, I've heard of Cliff High on this channel, maybe from you, but a couple of people have suggested I take a look. So I will do that. Will they sell the e mainnet or will it drive up the price? Um, I oh, Sorry, the mainnet, it was just a typo. Yeah, I think that um, that's a news event that could be sold, BP. Like people buy up to the mainnet launch and then sell into the mainnet launch. I think that that could happen. But I think when you team that, as Sam was suggesting, with a, a, an annual summit meeting, that potentially rumored to announce a partnership with Visa, I don't, I'm reassessing my icon position. I was going to sell some more if it hit sort of 12 or $15, but. No, I, I've done the maths that says 30, provided everything goes well, and that's conservative with money just out of career and no growth in the crypto economy. So for me to sell any at the moment seems absurd. So I'm not going to, um, given all the developments coming up in the next couple of weeks. And I feel like the informed icon investors will be in the same boat and absolutely frothing, surfer term, at this potential partnership with Visa. Everyone have a smoke and celebrate what is about to happen. BTC 15K, 15K overnight. What, what's happening? Is the market recovering that quickly? Don't tell me that, is it? Have I had that bigger effect? I must have. I'm going to have a look. So when I was checking last, it was 571 billion market cap. No, it's gone down. 561. 2% down, or 1 and 0.8% roughly. So, um, yeah, it's gone down a little bit, but yeah. 495 to 630. <laughs> Nadia said, no pun, that's the truth. We looked at it five days ago and it's gone from 495 to $6.30, you pumper. Yeah, but here's the thing, Nadio. That wouldn't have been very profitable for me considering I don't own one single toke. <laughs> so I'm glad that somebody got the gains from it, but I certainly wasn't intending to pump the coin. We look at we look at hundreds of coins on this show. 
Uh, Chronica said, I, um, bro, I've got several several here I can get downloaded for sure. People are interested. Sweet. Chronicus, can you take photos and stuff when you do it, man? Just get them doing one of these ones. The old surfing symbol, the old shaka. We, we, we'll make it a joint Chronicus fish Pivx promotion. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you some, dude. Get them downloading. That'd be sweet. I'm going up to, um, I'll make something. I'll tell you what, I haven't even told the, How's this? I would. Oh, am I going to? Yeah, I'm probably going to get in trouble, but who cares? I'm going to drop something on you that I haven't even told the Pivx team yet. Pivx are officially sponsoring the Sunshine Coast Bodyboarding Club in 2018. Uh, which, although the Gold Coast Bodyboarding Club is far superior, sorry, Sunshine Coast. Sunshine Coast does have Gary Thatcher, number one drop mayor in Australia, and also Lachlan Cramsey number one prone rider in Australia. So they're going through a bit of a purple patch at the moment, which is interesting because the color of Pivx is purple. Anyway, I was speaking to the um, president, uh, Tyler Krinks of Sunshine Coast Bodyboarding Club, and he has accepted uh, sponsorship from Pivx in 2018 for their season. Now they'll have somewhere in the vicinity of 100 people contesting, like 100 actual riders contesting in their championships this year at the Sunshine Coast, not to mention family and friends and things like that. So with a heavy Pivx focus there, we're hoping obviously to get a whole lot of wallets open and a whole lot of surfers um, supporting the, the alliance that Pivx is forming in, with the surfing community. Um, and that's like, obviously I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> it's bringing some money into um, a sport that really doesn't have a lot of funding in our country. Like honestly, the South American teams with poorer countries are funded far, far better than the Australian bodyboarding team. I know that because I used to be the captain of the Australian bodyboarding team. So I can tell you right now that we receive less funding than South American um, countries whose economies we we are much bigger than. <laughs> much more, um, yeah, much more fortunate in that respect, but very, very little money goes into bodyboarding because we're a very, very strong stand-up surfing country and um, stand-up surfers are really heavily supported. Oh, I won't say really heavily supported, as usual. Fishy sees some problems in the administration of both sports um, where money could be saved. I'm not going to go too much into that because I always get into trouble when I do. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, bodyboarding doesn't receive a lot of funding. So for, um, for us to, you know, be able to achieve a agreement with Sunshine Coast Bodyboarding Club that allows us to bring some much needed funding into the sport in our country was a big win for me and hopefully um, is going to help really build the Pivx community as well. So Sunshine Coast Bodyboarding Club, I also am in negotiations with my own bodyboarding club, Gold Coast Bodyboarding Club, which is going to cause some conflict when we have the Interclub Challenge, both sponsored by Pivx, the Pivx Showdown. But um, no, the, the Sunshine Coast Bodyboarding Club are filled with a lot of great members and obviously two of the top riders in Australia in prone and, and, and drop the division. So I think that was a big win for us and uh, look forward to being involved in their 10 events throughout the season. Should be great. Sorry for the rant, but that's also my prerogative being a Pivx representative and uh, this is my channel. <laughs> Uh, where are we going? Okay, catching up some more with Sam because I don't think we've spoken to uh, Sam much before. Binance CEO was talking about moving to a decentralized platform for any network that could handle the transactions per second. Hope ICX takes a look at this opportunity. Sam, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I heard Binance are looking at going decentralized, man. I heard that was in their roadmap. I think that's a good move for them. Be clever. Nadia said, the reason the BTC will climb like that in that this year, next six months, the masses will be getting in. To get in, most will buy BTC because of uneducation of what crypto is. Logical. Cool. <laughs> Positive energy. Think law of attraction. Super hot. Tart Doddle's making some predictions. It will only take 10% of us to believe that 15K BTC tomorrow by 7.06. <laughs> Such a specific time. That's awesome. I just sent Pivx to your Addy. Just sent Pivx Addy to your Discord via DM. 
Yeah, cool, man. Well, I'll load up a wallet. Oh, I'll just send that from my actual normal wallet for you then, Crypto, uh, Chronicus, and then we'll do a promo for that bet still. I want to pay that bet on screen share if that's cool so we can share a quick it transfers and we'll just sort that out when you're back. But I'll send you some more pip for, you know, to get a few more people in Cancun interested. But I'm not surprised to, pe to hear people already knew about it because, as I said, we've actually got a fairly active community there, including actual businesses, retail establishments that accept PIVX. So that's that's brilliant. Ride the crypto train. It's a train. We should surf in Costa Rica next month. I'll be there for hedge fund conference. I've got to go to Japan next month. So I can't. <laughs> Fish, whatever you do, don't pull a Charlie Lee. <laughs> nah, man. I, I, I don't, if you mean by giving away all my crypto, nah. I, I will a bit. But I won't just dump it all. That's the thing. I'll just give it away to people who are actually going to make good use of it. Nadio said, what's PIVX? Don't be cheeky, Nadio. I do it all the time. What up from Melbourne? Timothy Hall. How are you, man? How's the weather down there? It's bloody hot up here on the Gold Coast. And whatever Timothy Hall says the Melbourne is Melbourne weather is now, we'll ask him again 15 minutes and it will have completely changed. <laughs> Four seasons in one day in Melbourne, for those of you international viewers who aren't aware. All right, guys, I think that's about it for me today. I've gotten to the stage where I have absolutely talked my mouth off again. Great conversation today. Had a look, having a look at that Icon Rumours, obviously, for the Icon holders, we're hoping that turns out to be true. Um, oh, it's a cracker of a day. Nice to hear. You getting any swell down there? We got a little bit on the East Coast this week. Um, I'm going to head out to D-Bar now for a surf, actually. I haven't seen what it's been like down in Melbourne. But yeah, I might be heading down that way soon, actually, catching up with an old friend. And Jow said, hit that like button and subscribe if you're a first-timer and wanting to join in future crypto con conversations. So, yeah, I'll catch up with you all. Cheer, Kai, you stay frosty as well. Seb, catch you later. Superheart.org, we'll see you soon. Amma Jorad Singh, what's your take on USA government shutdown? I'll have to speak about that on tomorrow's stream. Catch you then. See ya, fish out.